Well, it's estimated every New Zealander creates an average of 19 kilos of electronic or e-waste a year. That's a whopping 89 million kilograms in total. And the Ministry for the Environment expects this to rise to nearly 27 kilos per person by 2030. So what happens to our phones, laptops and heaters once they're broken or unwanted? Charlie Drever visited the shop Second Treasure next to Wellington's southern landfill to find out. All the stuff and whack it on. The second treasure shop is alive with upbeat music and an eclectic mix of pre loved goods line the shelves and walls, waiting to be picked through by customers. Staff never quite know what they'll find in the drop off room when they come into work. Let's see, we got a whole bunch of animal head costumes um, like a few days ago, and I'm not exactly sure what this is. It's like a like a caped Avenger. But Wellington City Council Resource Recovery Manager Rod Boyce says there's one thing they do get a lot of, e-waste. Stepping outside the shop, I'm greeted by metal crates and pallets of plastic wrapped televisions. There's a huge skip of electrical wires, while a staffer is chucking various electrical goods in another large skip. That's the bin that we do one to two a week of, and it's about 100 tonnes a year. And, and we did a little bit of calculation, so the typical resident is uh, supposedly supposed to produce about 20 kgs of e-waste per annum, and that number's going up. So if you extrapolate that out to Wellington, it's about 3% of the e-waste that Wellington City produces. Rod Boy says the problem is being compounded by electrical items that aren't built to last and consumers who lack the ability to fix their complex appliances. He says they try to give the unwanted goods a new lease of life. A, a bin full of the flat screens and they're actually about 60% of what we receive now and, and many of them are only you know three or four years old. So I've got a bin full of cords over here and so obviously the cords can be recycled for the copper. They chop them up and get the, the rubberized plastic off the outside and the copper's recycled. Many items are sold with stereos and VHS players particularly popular. Outside the shop there's also a shipping container with stacks of laptops. Half of these won't work and half of them will end up in the scrap bin, but we, we, give it, we give it a crack basically. And so what we do is we pull all the hard drives out, we factory wipe them so there's no chance of anybody's personal data ever being sold. And then the computers themselves are sold separately from the hard drives. He says a really good laptop in working order would set someone back about $80 at most, significantly less than a new one. Acting Waste Operations Manager Emily Taylor-Hall says they've been raising awareness of the store by selling emergency water tanks but they're keen to further spread the word to would-be customers. Everything apart from televisions are free to donate and customers appear to be enjoying the bargains too. You've got to scratch around, but there's often really good bargains. But I mean, it's all in good condition and you're saving money. So. Very good value. Last week I came in on Monday and it was half price for all the furniture out the front there. My friend took home a TV cabinet with his new flat screen TV on. Half price, it was $4. It's a little treasure trove. However, if waste production continues to increase at its current rate, they will eventually need to expand. In Wellington, for Checkpoint, I'm Charlie Drever.